What happens when family members run a scam together? Let's get right into it. Number four, campaign madness. Republican Congressman Duncan Hunter and his wife Margaret Hunter mishandled more than $250,000 that they received in campaign funds, putting it towards personal expenses and forging false campaign finance records. Duncan Hunter was exposed to the political sphere very young when his father was a member of Congress for 14 terms. In 2007, Duncan Lee Hunter, Duncan's father, announced that as part of his presidential bid, he would not seek re-election to the House of Representatives and retired from Congress. Hunter announced his candidacy for his father's seat, and in 2008, won the Republican primary with 72% of the vote. He later defeated the Democratic nominee, Mike Lumpkin, and became the first combat veteran of Iraq or Afghanistan to serve in the U.S. Congress. The couple used campaign funds for many things, including video games, private school tuition, and oral surgery, despite spending campaign funds for personal use being banned by the law. They used the funds for European vacations, ski trips, and hotel stays. Days. Their lives might have seemed glamorous and lavish to outsiders, but the couple was dealing with serious financial struggles. Although Hunter received an annual salary of $174,000 and Margaret was paid $3,000 a month as his campaign manager, their bank accounts overdrew more than 1,100 times over seven years and the bank charged them $37,761 in overdraft and insufficient fund fees. After receiving a shutoff notice, they had to use the campaign credit card for groceries and use donations to pay their water bill. Financial pressure led to the family selling their home and moving in with Hunter's father. The couple disguised their transactions as campaign-related, like creating official government business at sites they were visiting on vacation. The Federal Election Commission, FEC, and the San Diego Union Tribune began questioning campaign expenses in April 2016. Hunter asserted his innocence countless times, refusing to admit his guilt or resign his seat when the charges were released to the public. One of Hunter's attorneys, Gregory A. Vega, attacked the prosecutor's credibility with the U.S. Attorney's Office and one of them recused. He claimed that two of the prosecutors attended a 2015 fundraiser for Democrat Hillary Clinton, which would make them biased against Hunter. Amongst the suspicious purchases that Hunter made to his campaign was a vacation to Italy, which he told his campaign treasurer was military defense related. Later in an email, Margaret Hunter told a friend how great the family trip had been. Hunter fought allegations of wrongdoing by making his chief of staff deny that the trip was a family vacation to the press. In 2016, the Office of Congressional Ethics recommended that the Ethics Committee perform a full investigation on the couple. In February 2017, the FBI raided Hunter's campaign offices, agents seized computers and hard drives, and Hunter was soon under a Department of Justice criminal investigation. Investigators uncovered the scope of the couple's fraudulent spending, which began in 2010 when Hunter started reimbursing his campaign account after Margaret Hunter purchased 12 tickets to see How the Grinch Stole Christmas at the Globe Theater. The couple used campaign funds from 2010 to late 2016, reporting all of their expenses as campaign-related to the campaign treasurer. Hunter alleged that one of his many campaign-related trips was a vacation to Las Vegas. A friend that went on the trip described a very different vacation, where they lounged by the pool, went sightseeing, ate out at several restaurants, and went to a show. Hunter attempted to conceal his illegal spending on that trip by scheduling a 20-minute tour of a nearby charter school. When the family's bank account balance was negative, the Hunters put campaign funds towards a date night and a couple's day out at Del Mar Racetrack. They also used funds to celebrate their child's birthday. Again, Hunter justified these expenses as campaign related to the treasurer. By November 2017, Hunter had repaid over $60,000 to his campaign for what he claimed were mistaken or insufficiently documented expenditures. The couple was indicted in 2018 and charged with unlawfully spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. The pair entered the courtroom separately and had separate legal teams and they both pleaded not guilty. In June 2019, Hunter pleaded guilty to one count of misusing campaign funds, and Margaret Hunter pleaded guilty to one count of corruption. Court documents showed they spent on small things like movie tickets, groceries, and utilities. They also made elaborate purchases like trips to luxury hotels and even plane tickets for their family rabbits. Margaret acknowledged that she secretly funded thousands of dollars in improper personal purchases using Hunter's campaign funds. 
Hunter blamed his wife for the crimes, as she was the campaign manager and in charge of finances. He claimed that the $1,000 in video game purchases that investigators uncovered were purchases made by his son. He alleged that the prosecution targeted him as he was one of the earliest supporters of Donald Trump's campaign. U.S. Attorney Mark Conover commended Margaret for her cooperation with investigators, contributing to her sentence of eight months in home confinement, which began in August 2020. Hunter's attorneys also sought home confinement, but he was sentenced to 11 months federal prison. The House Ethics Committee told Hunter he had to refrain from voting because he pleaded guilty to a federal felony. Later that year, in December, he announced his resignation from Congress. Hunter was supposed to report to prison in Latuna, Texas in January 2021, but former President Trump pardoned Hunter and Margaret Hunter in December 2020. Number 3. 12 Years to Scam Husband and wife, Philip and Laura Borel, along with Laura's mother, Frances Noble, conspired to commit fraud when they convinced Hertfordshire County Council in England that Frances had a brain disorder. The three family members swindled £734,000 from the council as part of a direct payments care package. The scam lasted from August 1st, 2005 to November 30, 2018. Hertfordshire County Council offers care packages to people that are assessed as needing help and want to arrange their care. The council gave the trio access to a direct payments care package to support Frances, who claimed to be unable to feed herself and bedbound, meaning that she needed daily care. The trio put together forged emails on behalf of caregivers Frances hired to look after her at her home. Over 13 years, Frances received £624,047 from the council. Philip and Laura Burrell took their fraud further when they appeared on the popular British show This Morning. Laura announced on national television that she had dementia. She said that it began when she started to mix her words. She spoke about being dismissed by doctors, describing a neurologist as vile after they didn't believe her. Philip added that she would have episodes where she would struggle with her language or speak incoherently. He also said that she would get confused, especially in the evening. When asked about her prognosis, she said it was too difficult to tell due to her age. The hosts announced that the couple was raising money to spread awareness for the disease and travel so that the pair could enjoy the time they had left together. People began became suspicious of the couple's announcement of their diagnosis, including neighbors that noticed the Amazon truck delivering many packages to the Burrell's house. They grew increasingly curious about Philip's job since Laura couldn't work. Neighbors were baffled when the couple purchased a brand new Volvo. They also went on lavish vacations, going to places like Boston, San Francisco, and Canada between 2011 and 2017. Frances raised suspicions in her neighborhood when they saw her walking her dog and unpacking a supermarket food delivery without any signs of physical strain. She claimed that she couldn't leave the house nor do any physical activity. Carers believe that Frances was exaggerating the extent of her needs and reported it to Hertfordshire County Council who began a fraud investigation. Frances moved to Germany in 2019 when the police opened up an investigation against her. And a few months later, she was joined by Laura and Philip. In June 2020, the three family members pleaded not guilty at St. Albans Crown Court. They changed their pleas to guilty in 2022. The Burrells returned to the UK to appear before the court, but Francis stayed in Berlin and denied any wrongdoing. She said they were running out of money to fight the case, which was the only reason they changed their pleas from not guilty to guilty. Francis was sentenced to four years and nine months in jail by St. Albans Court for defrauding Hertfordshire County Council. The judge sentenced Laura Burrell to three years and nine months and Philip Burrell to four years and three months. Both were charged with money laundering offenses related to fraud. Their crime was one of the largest frauds of its type to be brought to English courts. Number two, advertising scams. The owners of Smith Advertising stole $63 million from their 100 victims due to a fraud scheme they conducted from 2008 to 2012. Gary Truman Smith and his son, Gary Todd Smith, ran Smith Advertising, a North Carolina-based company that also had a presence in Florida. Their investors lost hundreds of thousands of dollars and some were forced to declare bankruptcy. Smith Advertising began as a legitimate business that did advertising work, but in the mid-2000s, it struggled to stay afloat. Things only got worse when the 2008 financial crisis hit. Other companies might have filed for bankruptcy or restructured their business model, but the father and son were too money-hungry to do either. They 
solicited investors when the business began to struggle, reaching out to friends, people in their community, churchgoers, and other organizations. The terms of the loans were that investors would give the company money to pre-purchase advertising at a discount, and Smith Advertising would repay them the amount of the loan and give them a cut of the discount. Truman Smith and Todd Smith advertised bridge loans to everyone they knew. A bridge loan is a short-term loan to cover an interval between two transactions and is most commonly used for buying one house and selling another. The company wasn't buying advertising like they told investors. They used the loans to repay old debts and keep the company afloat. Some victims received their promised return from the company, but that money came from another victim's investments. Smith Advertising engaged in factoring, an industry term for companies selling off the money they're owed from one company because they need cash faster. The Smiths didn't have any money coming in. They printed fake invoices and ripped off investors, buying debts owed to them. They pretended that it was factoring, but in reality, they were lying to investors. Gary Todd Smith, the son, enjoyed his expensive lifestyle too much to let their scheme fail. He inherited the company from his father, and the pair let out their lavish lifestyles while the business secretly faltered. Todd Smith's love for his lifestyle and pride stopped him from ever declaring bankruptcy, and he wanted to get out of trouble by himself. The debt the company accumulated eventually destroyed them, and at one point, their bank balance was minus $12 million. The Secret Service and FBI were notified that the company's checks were bouncing. Investigators quickly found that the company company had performed fraudulent activities. The evidence included two sets of company books, one that was legitimate and the other that documented their scheme, which showed how to falsify documents. Smith Advertising was sued by Sarasota's Receivable Management Funding LLC, or RMF, who alleged that the father and son convinced RMF, an investment group, to provide more than $17 million to the company. RMF accused them of fraud and misrepresentation. The suit claimed that Todd Smith faked invoices from clients claiming to owe the firm money. RMF was supposed to collect that money to repay revolving credit loans and give investors 20% or more. Smith Advertising told RMF that one of their clients, Charlotte County Visitors Bureau, owed $900,000. RMF's administrative manager, Michael Schultz, reached out to the Bureau as a Smith secured creditor. Laura Steiner, the Bureau's director, said their annual advertising budget was $255,000. Schultz told her that the Visitors Bureau had an outstanding balance of $900,000 and that he needed to collect it. Steiner wanted to know who did the due diligence on the supposed debt, to which Schultz sent her a stack of invoices. She maintained that someone forged her signature on at least one of the invoices. Smith Advertising collapsed in 2012 with a net worth of negative $169.8 million. The Smiths had three accomplices that worked for Smith Advertising and helped perpetrate the scheme. They pleaded guilty 2016 to conspiracy to commit wire and mail fraud and agreed to help prosecutors. Gary Truman Smith pleaded guilty to conspiracy conspiracy to commit wire fraud charges and received a five-year sentence in January 2019. His son, Gary Todd Smith, pleaded guilty to wire fraud and mail fraud charges in 2017. He was sentenced to 40 years in prison. The judge ordered Todd Smith to pay his victims $63.5 million in restitution, but his bankruptcy makes it unlikely that he'll ever be able to pay them back. Their victims suffered financial devastation due to the Smith's fraud scheme and dealt with bankruptcies and losing their homes, retirement funds, and children's education funds. Number one, like father, like daughter. Businessman Mac Hosendial Luckhope and his daughter Naletti were charged with fraud, forgery, and uttering under the company names Emma Bongui Building, Civil Contractors CC, and Tsunami Civils. Together, they defrauded the Eastern Cape Education Department of 4 million South African Rand, around $218,000. And yep, uttering is a real charge in South Africa. The charge of uttering is for a crime where someone intends to defraud knowingly by selling, publishing, or passing on a forged document. You know, basically scamming. They ran separate companies and submitted fraudulent lease agreements for their offices in the Eastern Cape of South Africa, leading to them being awarded funding meant for aspiring local entrepreneurs. Luckhope allegedly submitted an unlawful lease contract that misrepresented that Amabangui building was operational in the Eastern Cape and had a business in the province. The Provincial Education Department awarded 1.9 million South African Rand, roughly 103490 Naledi was the sole director of Tsunami Civils and, like her father, was awarded money from the education department in the Eastern Cape when she claimed her business there. She advertised herself on Instagram as an entrepreneur and sold clothes through social media. She caused a stir in South African tabloids when social media users thought she was used as a front by her dad being too young to pull off the scheme alone. 
Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section whether or not you think there should be a limit on how rich someone can be.